Welcome back to Lambretta Lutz and the next part of the installation of a Chimera Twin. So thank you for the likes of the other parts. And before I start today with preparing the barrels um, and explaining the crankshaft of Chimera, I'd like to go to back to one point that uh, we figured out in the last part regarding drilling the holes and regarding the saturation that maybe the surfaces have uh, different heights and how to compensate that. So let me first comment the point um, why I drill the holes uh, not in a professional way with uh, putting the engine block on a, a proper drilling machine plate and uh, making the holes just with this uh, guide that is within the kit. So this kit is designed to give everybody possibilities to have a single cylinder engine Lambretta transfer and convert to a twin. So, and therefore I handle this year now with a workshop uh, as probably everybody who have already screwed with Lambretta engine can do it. So if I would now show a more complicated and difficult way, maybe that uh, will bring you away from doing it by yourself. The second thing is there are several ways of um, doing it uh, to make it accurate. For sure, you have this kind in your workshop. Uh, I even saw a hack where somebody took a nut, um, put a drill into it to have an accurate uh, drill. Sure, you can try it. I wouldn't do it because uh, it just works in some cases. You are fine with this guide. The guide is designed from Federico of uh, Scooter the Pharaoh. Um, it works very well. It's not the first kit that I'm building. So therefore, take your time making hole by holes, control it in between. And you have here an angle of 30 degrees anyway. It's quite complicated to put the engine on the 30 degrees angle to have then a drill and having the space. So don't worry about this. You have the guidance and you can do it. So regarding this, and thank you for the comment, um, that is very helpful also for other people. The so next thing, I show you very, uh, um, in, uh, very accurate what is the situation and how you will maybe have the situation that the fusing housing has a higher surface than your original case. So that is really done to have the situation that uh, this case will never be lower than the other one. And now I want to talk about different situations. So in this case, we just have uh, 15 uh, of uh, uh, so 0.15 millimeters. So it's not uh, inch or whatever. So it's 0.15 one five millimeters so let's discuss the possibilities yes as i said yes uh, uh, in the last part you can put here now sandpaper and doing the work and sandpaper and make it equal you can bring it to a workshop and uh, even i would have the possibilities to machine it completely down but that will take a lot of effort to make everything equal you can just drill down the um suffusing housing housing yeah maybe you have to bring it to a workshop as well so the easiest way and that you can maybe think about it is really, you know that, uh, that there is a difference. So you have to use different kind of, if you're not going for a very high performance uh, engine where it is very necessary to have accurate distance uh, later for the side quiz, you can easily work that with uh, gaskets using, for instance, here a 0.3 and here a 0.5 and you will good to go. So um, uh, as this is a client engine, I also discussed the possibility that comes with a situation that these barrels will be cut it off. So to bring them then together. So you will have clearly identified barrels for the right side and for the left side. So therefore, therefore, the other way that you can do, if you don't want to play around with different kind of um, um, gaskets, you can grid down the barrels from the bottom. So that is easy to do as well on a letter machine, if you have access to that or you have a friend who has, uh, has the possibility. So we actually decided we will continue as it is knowing that there is a um, 0.15 to 2, 0.2 millimeters difference. And in the end, when the crankshaft is installed and everything is installed, and we're going to the situation of controlling the uh, uh, timings, uh, controlling the uh, side squish uh, clearance, then 
I will take this uh, barrels before the final installation off and I will correct it from the bottom of the barrels to have it then equal. And then there is never uh, again a problem because the barrels will be clearly one side to the other side. The next step in the process of building a Chimera kit uh, and a twin engine is actually to grid away and modify the barrels, either existing ones or you get new ones, to cut them on the right side barrel, on the left side, you're seeing from the driving way of the scooter. So therefore, this is the left one. That is the right one. It's not left and right <laughs> differently. So long story short, um, this has guides and I position them there because you can see they are marked clearly with right hand barrel and left hand barrel. So, and just to um, be sure and having not suddenly the situation that you maybe for whatever reason you turn it wrong because it will fit like this on the barrel as well. And then you have this situation, uh, make a double check and maybe just remember that the sign, the signature has been down and uh, to be, uh, be yourself bulletproof, it would be a good advice to make yourself a mark on the top and um, writing here. And top, just a small advice. So, as this becomes again an awful, dirty job, I will recommend to do that outside and uh, I will show you the result later and then we step forward. To cut uh, the barrels, left and right side, everything is in a kit. So, first, I want to mark. Um, I will use that as right side, as I said, it is in the direction of driving, and that is the left side barrel in the future. So we have here marked left side. You put it on. You can get uh, one of these um, <coughs> cylinder beams <coughs> holes and then to put it in position <coughs> that uh, you have a clear position. So this one side and the other side, I will do it later completely. And you also have the grid that you use already for other work. And again, as you will work here with a lot of uh, aluminum dust, uh, please uh, take protection uh, for the hands, for the ears, for the eyes, and uh, important also not to breathe in this dust, dust. So I will continue now with the preparation. So I decided to try it uh, inside the workshop and uh, I make here with the industry um, uh, cleaner to suck the air away while I'm gritting it off so that you can see better the process um, and I will not bothering the neighbors with my noise on a Sunday. The first cylinder is now done. Um, I checked uh, 
the clearance to see it's really all over free and again my recommendation and i for sure will repeat it another time wearing gloves wearing uh, protection for the eyes ears and uh, especially for breathing it is really a lot of dust uh, i'm now happy that i could suck it away but still uh, for the next barrel i even will protect it uh, more so uh, if you can perform this outside and it's not just freezing or you have uh, neighbors there that are easily annoyed do it outside and uh, alternative you can bring it to a workshop and let it machine off but this is a do-it-yourself tutorial therefore we do it the way as it is all described in the kit so i will prepare the next barrel The second barrel is done as well. It takes about 50 minutes each side and you really can see how much dust it is. I will repeat it for the last time. Without any protection, without any sucking of the air, don't do it inside. Please do it outside. That is my big advice. And take something for not breathing the air. So I will guess uh, before we step forward, I have to clean up here. And uh, then we will see. The dirty work is done now. After cleaning up the scene, you can uh, take a careful look at the barrels. And uh, I would also recommend to break the sharp corners here in these areas, to make it a little bit round. So I did uh, this already on both barrels. Maybe I will do it a little bit better, but it's okay. So, and then the barrels should be easily, and I just put one bolt on it, slip, side by side on with the fusing housing as that would be single cylinders. They have clearness, they're lining up and so all the dirty work is done now. Now we're coming to the fun part. And I as promise, I want to give you a short uh, introduction how actually the the crankshaft coupling is working. So I separate the crankshaft here. So you have the drive side and you have the flywheel side. Here, this connection is just to connect them together. Then the wood roof keys are not there to holding any force. They are just to have then 180 degrees exactly the opposite and the rest it was installed like this way. This is uh, fill it on uh, this side. The rest will do the clamp. So, and that you will install one after the other. You have uh, one after the other. You have to put the bearings rings on it here as well, and uh, then put it together first this side and then with the fusing housing. There is no concern about that. This is working. My highest power that I bring over this uh, coupling system was uh, 77 horsepower on the back wheel and uh, was more than 60 Newton meter on torque. On this crankshaft, I built a little special one because I have a stroker one with 62 millimeters and special conroads. 
But in any case, this coupling system was still remaining the same, no modification, and I put more than 60 Newton meters over it. So watch out. I uh, hope you liked it so far with all the dirty work and integration to have now the clean work of uh, assembly, the Chimera kit, and uh, soon hopefully having then the first dyno. So please subscribe, leave a like, comment, what is also important for you to know, and have a joyful time.